yesterday, you said that you were called by the president. Dalawa lang kayo nag-usap. Yes, Your Honor. Tapos, uh, hindi mo inaamin dito sa amin sa previous hearing na hindi ka malakas kay Presidente Duterte. I don't... Hindi ko alam kung malakas. Po, po. Yeah, I think so, Mr. Chair. Na... Ngayon, inaamin mo na malakas ka sa kanya. Na... Because I can see from the scheme of things, tatatlo lang naman yung kwan eh. Opisyal na malakas noon doon sa na level na mataas, malakas kay Presidente. Ikaw, si Colonel Leonardo, at saka si Senator Bato de la Rosa. All the other officers, PNP officers, assigned in Davao, eh nasa ilalim pa nga ninyo eh. Tama? Kasi, Madam Garma, ah... Uh, All the signs are there na malakas ka kay former President Digong. Kasi sa isang ceremony sa Malacanang where generals of the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, Bureau of Fire Protection, and the Philippine National Police, naka-white duck silang lahat eh. At ikaw lang ang colonel, lieutenant colonel na mapapromote sa full colonel in blue attire. Yes, and po. the president gave you special attention and yet you are very brave and blatant to say na hindi ka malakas kay former president Duterte. I would have cited you in contempt then because you were lying. Pero now that you are cooperating, aminin mo ba ngayon? During, yes, Mr. Chair. I have... Uh... Mabuti, inaamin mo. We have questioned the... Uh, uh, Former Commissioner Leonardo, in the previous hearings that we have had, he has always denied itong pwesto niya dito sa, sa diagram na ginawa po ninyo. He has always denied that whenever we have asked him that question. And now, here you are, stating na siya pala ang paymaster. Now, who is telling the truth uh, between you and Colonel Leonardo? I am telling the truth, Your Honor. You are saying the truth? Na siya talaga ang paymaster? Yes, po. Nabasa na yung paa mo, maligo ka na. Yun ang sabi ni Chairman Barbers. Ang ibig niya sabihin, uh, may alam na kami, nagsabi ka na ng konti, buhos, ibuhos mo na. Maligo ka na ng todo. Sabihin mo na ang buong katotohanan. I am afraid of my life, Mr. Chair. And the life of my relatives and my friends and classmates. After considerable reflection, I am now executing this affidavit to provide a comprehensive information to the Quadcom regarding everything I personally know about the war and during the former administration. On, on May 2026, I received a call from the President, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, at approximately 5 a.m., instructing me to meet him at his residence in Tonya Luisa, Napo City. I was already acquainted with the, with the mayor having served as the station commander in one of the police stations in Davao City during his tenure. During our meeting, he requested that I will locate a PNP officer or operative who is a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, indicating that he needed someone capable of implementing the war on, on a national level, replicating the double model. 
<laughs> Nakakagulat din po yung nilalaman ng inyong affidavit dahil a complete turnaround. So, meron po bang pumilit sa inyo para i-execute itong affidavit na to? Wala pa, Mr. Chair. Um, it took me one week to make some reflections po. And what and, pushes uh, you uh, to, ano, to yeah, uh, execute? I, I, yeah, I realize the the truth will always set us free, Mr. Chair. And uh, at least I will be able to contribute if we really want to make to make this country a better place to live and for our children. I think we have to do something para maibalik po yung trust sa PNP, magkaroon po ng reform sa PNP, and uh, yung tiwala po ng mga tao, whether victims of criminals sa gobyerno. Kanina po may sinasabi kayo na natatakot kayo sa buhay nyo at sa pamilya nyo. Uh, Saan po kayo natatakot? Of course po, it's normal, Mr. Chair, when you speak the truth, you cannot please everyone. And it's normal to anybody to have that mixed emotion. But still, it took me one week to make reflections. And uh, I realized I need to do my part po. <laughs> Dahil po ba sa relasyon nyo sa nakaraang uh, administrasyon kay former president? Um, Kaya po ang damdamin nyo po ay uh, mixed emotion? Normal lang naman bilang tao po, Mr. Chair. Pero what prevailed after a week of reflection is I always say the truth will always set me free. We are I want a better place, a better PNP, Mr. Chair. Dating Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte, inilaglag na ni dating PCSO General Manager Ruhina Garma na utak sa patayan sa war on c***s. Napaamin rin ni Congressman Akop si Ruhina Garma na malakas siya kay Duterte. Sa affidavit ni retired Colonel Ruhina Garma, edinitali niya ang umanay utos sa kanya ni dating Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte na maghanap ng PNP officer o operatiba na may kakayahang maimplementa ang war on drugs sa buong bansa. During our meeting, he requested that I locate a Philippine National Police or PNP officer or operative who is a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, indicating that he needed someone capable of implementing the war on drugs on a national scale, replicating the Davao model. Ang pag-amin ni Karma This Davao model referred to the system involving payments and rewards. The Davao model involves three levels of payments or rewards. First is the reward if the suspect is killed. Second is the funding of plans operations or co-plans. The third is the refund of operational expenses. Dagdag pa ni Garma habang umiiyak. Emotional na nagsorry si retired police colonel at former PCSO general manager Ruhina Garma sa mga biktima ng extrajudicial killings sa pagdinig ng House Squad Committee. Ito ay kasunod ng ibinunyag niya na inutos umano ni ex-president Rodrigo Duterte na humanap ng PNP officer or operative na may kakayahang magpatupad ng Davao model na war on c*** sa national level. Samantala, pinuna ni Representative Benvenido Abante Jr. ang pagkumento na ginawa umano ni retired colonel Ruhina Garma sa libing ng isang EJK victim. Ayon kay Abante, nag-alisan ang mga tao sa libing dahil sa takot nila kay Garma nang siya ay bumisita sa libing. Idiniin din ni Abante ang paglabag sa constitutional right to life ng mga biktima ng extrajudicial c***. Ating panoorin ang buong video. Madam Garma, meron po kayong affidavit at saka diagram na binigay. Pero tama po yung sabi nila, wala po kayo. Hindi po ba? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Now, Honor. how would you know these things kung wala ka sa sistema? Um, nung pong umpisa po na inaayos po ni Sir sa CIDG, <laughs> yung mga ganyan po eh since friends ko rin naman sila and uh, parang nalaman ni Sir Leonardo din na kaya na, siya ang na-mention dahil po nagtanong sa akin si Presidente 
nagkukwento po siya. And pag nandun po ako sa pusina, nakikita ko yung movement. So lahat ng informasyon mo tungkol dito sa Warren Banks na, na nakalagay dito yung, sa iyong affidavit at saka dito sa diagram na binigay mo, galing po lahat ito kay Colonel Leonardo in your um, meetings uh, with him? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And yes po. And yung experience din nila sa ground as Hindi, na... Uh, Ah. Kasi uh, experience nila sa ground. So in other words, sa lahat ng bagay, hindi po kayo kasama pero karamihan sa detalye ng operation ng war on drugs, alam po ninyo. And yet, you say, hindi ka kasama sa sistema. Alam ko po, Mr. Chair, kasi po, uh, kami po din sa ground, nakakahalubilo ko yung R2 namin, yung mga operatiba, yan po pinagkukwentuhan. And there was a briefing... Uh, na, na pagkausap po siya, si Sir Leonardo, nakukwento niya yung level, sa ano ba yung level 1 na yan? Hindi, dahil pag level 1, ano lang yan, ordinary, nag-explain siya. I cannot recall na lang po yung specific amounts po sa lahat. Okay. Nag-explain po siya sa akin. On that day, you said that you were called by the President. Dalawa lang kayo nag-usap. Yes, Your Honor. Tapos, uh, hindi mo inaamin dito sa amin sa previous hearing na hindi ka malakas kay Presidente Duterte? I don't... Hindi ko alam kung malakas. Po, po. Yeah, I think so, Mr. Chair. Na... Ngayon, inaamin mo na malakas ka sa kanya. Na... Because I can see from the scheme of things, tatatlo lang naman yung kwan eh. Opisyal na malakas noon doon sa na level na mataas, malakas kay Presidente. Ikaw, si Colonel Leonardo, at saka si Senator Bato de la Rosa. All the other officers, PNP officers, assigned in Davao, ay eh, nasa ilalim pa nga ninyo eh. Tama? Kasi, Madam Garma, ah, uh, All the signs are there na malakas ka kay former President Digong. Kasi sa isang ceremony sa Malacanang where generals of the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, Bureau of Fire Protection, and the Philippine National Police, naka-white duck silang lahat eh. At ikaw lang ang colonel, lieutenant colonel, na mapapromote sa full colonel in blue attire. Yes, and po. the president gave you special attention and yet you are very brave and blatant to say na hindi ka malakas kay former president Duterte. I would have cited you in contempt then because you were lying. Pero now that you are cooperating, aaminin mo ba ngayon? During, yes, Mr. Chair. I have... Uh, uh, mabuti, inaamin mo. Ngayon, In so far as the question of the Honorable Fernandez is concerned, whether you have romantic ties with the President, I leave that to the imagination of the Honorable Fernandez. Hindi na ako magtatanong doon. Kasi kung magtatanong ako, baka umamin ka eh. Kaya ayaw ko na rin. Oo, sa totoo lang. Baka umamin ka. At anyway, ah... Yung binanggit mo na pangalan, Romel Baktat, Rodel Serbo, Mik Mikael Palma, they were all members of CIDG? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Chair. And how did you come to know them? I was assigned with CIDG um, 2005 to 2008. And how so, did you know their specific uh, assignments vis-a-vis -vis Colonel Leonardo? Ah, sinasabi po nila eh. Pina Sino nagsasabi? Sila po, sir. Ah, kung kung nag tapok, <coughs> nag ipon-ipon, sir. Okay. And sa ma-observe naman sa movement, oh, paki-encode mo to, ganun. Makikita mo. Ah, okay. So, pag pulis po, chismoso, chismosa po tayo. So, nagtatanong po tayo, Mr. Chair. Kaya ako Kaya nagtataka, po, Madam po. Garma, alam mo ang sistema, yung general structure at saka flow 
ng communications at saka flow ng monetary considerations pero hindi ka kasama sa sistema. Uh, hindi ako makapaniwala doon, Madam Ama. Now, itong si Baktat, Serbo and Palma were already dismissed, I think, this year, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. Sa dami ng kaso nila. Yes. They were dismissed administratively because of the administrative cases filed against them. Would that be correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Now, uh, dito sa dito sa diagram, kilala mo ba lahat yung mga tao na nandito? Dito sa ginawa mo? Opo, Mr. Chair. Except for alias Muking? Sir, I was really trying to recall her first name talaga. Honestly, Pero you, I cannot... first name, in other uh, words, you knew her last name. Espino or Espina, I wasn't sure. Pinaresearch ko rin po yung kagabi, hindi ako nabigyan ng, ng sagot po. That's why it's a public knowledge naman and when you say Muking. How did you come to know that the money came from, his, from her office? going uh, to a certain Mr. Pedro uh, Parungo. Sinabi po ni Pedro, sir, yung pong sinabi ko na kung makamot siya ng ulo, sabi ko, oy bakit? Sagot niya sa akin, problema ako, ma'am, kasi marami ng pera pumapasok sa account ko, nasisita na ako. O, oh, saan galing? Galing kay instruction ko ni pinapadala ni Muking. Yun po ang sinabi niya sa akin po. We have questioned the... Uh, uh, former Commissioner Leonardo in the previous hearings that we have had. He has always denied itong pwesto niya dito sa, sa diagram na ginawa po ninyo. He has always denied that whenever we have asked him that question. And now, here you are stating na siya pala ang paymaster. Now, who is telling the truth uh, between you and Colonel Leonardo? I am telling the truth, Your Honor. You are saying the truth. Na siya talaga ang paymaster. Yes, po. Pero hindi mo alam na ang code name niya ay Eagle, no tinanong ka ni Juan, ni hindi. Honorable Rods uh, Gutierrez. Hindi po ako... Kasi code name ang ginagamit nung talagang directly involved po. Hindi po kasi ako na, ano kaya hindi ko alam na Eagle po. Well, alam, mo yung mga, alam mo yung mga sistema eh. Ako nga, wala ako sa sistema. Alam ko yung code name na yun eh. Di ba? Yes po. I, honestly speaking, I, I didn't know po na Eagle <coughs> siya. Ang code name po niya. Alam mo, Madam Garma, uh, sabi ni... Ito, I learned this from uh, our chairman, si Chairman Ace Barbers. Nabasa na yung paa mo, maligo ka na. Yun ang sabi ni Chairman Barbers. Ang ibig niya sabihin, uh, may alam na kami, nagsabi ka na ng konti, buhos, ibuhos mo na, maligo ka na ng todo, sabihin mo na ang buong katotohanan. Kasi, uh, uh, as far as this representation is concerned, hindi mo pa sinasabi lahat. Yun po sa Eagle talaga po. I, I cannot recall. I, hindi ko po alam na siya yung Eagle. I, kasi po, code ang ginagamit ng mga nasa ground. But ako, I don't, I don't use Eagle. I don't know kung sinong Eagle nga po eh. Now, Sir. you have also stated in your affidavit na yung mga ibang official, hindi naman lahat, na nakaka-deliver yun ang terminology mo ay nabibigyan ng reward ni Colonel Leonardo. Do you still cling to that statement of yours? Ang sinasabi ko po Mr. Chair, uh, hindi po directly binibigay. Sometimes may na-assign na doon idadaan tapos siya magdi-distribute. May ganong setup po na nangyayari. Uh, ibig mo sabihin may ina-assign si Colonel Leonardo na tao para magbigay? Yung I, bang ibig mo sabihin? 
hindi ko po alam kung siya nag-assign or may nag-volunteer, I don't know, but uh, what I am aware po is merong doon ibibigay tapos yung officer na yun ang mag magbibigay dun sa sa chief of police or whoever is yung may trabaho. Meron pong sistema din po na rekta sa kanya. Tapos irerekta din na ibigay. So it depends po kung ano yung naging arrangement sa kanya. Kung so, yun po yung kung yung provincial director ang nag-accomplish or nag-deliver paano ang paraan para siya ay nabibigyan ng reward? Um pwedeng diretso yung PD sa kanya or may inassign po yung PD to communicate dun po sa tao niya. Pwede pong ganun. Depende po sa arrangement na gagawin po nila. Your Pwede honor. rin. Hindi dadaan sa regional director? Yung PD? Pwede rin po yun, uh, your, Mr. Chair. Hindi. Tinatanong kita. Yung, may ganun hindi yung si pwede ang ah. gusto kong sagot. Eh. Kasi... Um, uh, yung ngayon yung sinabi ko, nabasa na nga yung buong paa mo, ayaw mo pang maligo eh. Um, may nangyayaring, may ganun pong pangyayari po. Pwede po, depende po sa naging arrangement po ng officers sa ground sa kanya. Kasi ang arrangement is siya po nagde-decide eh. Would it be correct, uh, Madam Garma, na si, si, si Colonel Leonardo was in charge basically sa mga na-assign na mga magdi-deliver sa CIDG. At si Senator Bato de la Rosa would be in charge doon sa Special Operations Group ng mga regional and uh, uh, provincial offices. Would I be correct? Hindi po eh. Ang alam ko po, kay Sel Leonardo lahat po, diretso. Kanino? Kay Sir Leonardo po lahat diretso. Diretso? Yes, sir. Yung mga nagkliklaim? Even, even SOGs po. Ang kay, kay, kay Colonel ko po, Leonardo lahat tumi diretso? Opo. Or meron po na dedicate na officer na dun ipadaan yung pera tapos siya magdi-distribute. And you stand by that Yun, uh, on your honor? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Now, Colonel Patay, Yes, Mr. Chair. Iba, ikaw ba ay nakakobra? Wala po, Mr. Chair. Sa IMOE lang po ako at saka sa PADS, Mr. Chair. Kasi marami, po kang, marami pong personnel sa Season 6 sumabot ng mula 300 hanggang 600. So, 1,390 po yung ano namin. Wala po akong ano doon, Mr. Chair. Ano, no, no? Wala po akong natatanggap doon, Mr. Chair. Doon sa mga napatay dito sa Quezon City? Wala po, Mr. Chair. So, what you're trying to tell us is, uh, Madam Garma is the one lying. Eh, hindi ko po alam yung ganun, Mr. Chair. Ganun, yung mga schemes na ganun. Kasi po, Mr. Chair, di ba po ako nasa ng Davao City, Mr. Chair? Uh, hey, hindi porket hindi ka nasa sa Davao City, hindi mo alam yung scheme na yan. It's not logical. Diba? Bakit ako? Hindi ko hindi ako na-assign sa sa Davao, pero alam ko na ngayon. No, following your logic, Colonel Patay. Mr. Chair, ngayon ko lang rin narinig yung mga ganyan na ano, na nag-confirm si Colonel Garma. Hmm. Isang bag, isang conclusion lang yung nangyari. Di ba, Colonel Pitalyo? nabukulan Sir. di ba? Doon sa linggo ninyo di sir. Nabukulan Parehas kami sa Colonel Patay Na nabukulan ka rin di, sir. How about you? Colonel Grijaldo, nabukulan ka rin Hindi ko rin alam yung <laughs> Kasi kumakalat na sa inyong sa inyong uh, chat group eh. Huwag niyong aminin na kwan eh. Na na may reward. You know why? Bakit ganon? Kasi yung pagtratrabaho ninyo 
it's no longer service for the country and people. It is service for profit. Yun ang nangyayari. And that would be the impression that we have in so far as this committee is concerned. You were not doing your job just because you love your job or you love this country. You were doing that job because of the reward. Di ba? Kaya kumakalat sa inyong chat ngayon na huwag aminin. Pero mas naniniwala na ka ako ngayon kaysa sa inyo kay Madam Garma. Kasi at stake na yung buhay niya eh. Kayo, nandiyan pa kayo. Naka-uniforme, may baril sa tagiliran. But in the case of Madam Garma, tama yung sabi niya. Kanina. Takot na siya. Marami pong salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman Akop. On September 12, 2024 and September 27, 2024, I was invited to serve as a resource speaker during the recent legislative inquiry conducted by the Joint Committee on Dangerous Order and Safety, Human Rights and Public Accounts of the Honorable House of Representatives regarding the investigation into the war of the previous administration. During these hearings, I was asked several questions concerning my knowledge or involvement in the deaths of three Chinese inmates of the Double Penal Colony of General Wesley Barayuga, all focusing on the alleged extrajudicial case of the aforementioned individuals. I was also questioned about my relationship with the former president, as well as my career as a police officer and my tenure as the general manager of the Philippine Charity Ship Stakes Office. Throughout the hearings, I answered questions from the committee based on my personal knowledge. However, I did so with great apprehension as I recognized that my statements on national television could significantly endanger my life, the safety of my family. <laughs> and other very close to me. After considerable reflection, I am now executing this affidavit to provide a comprehensive information to the Quadcom regarding everything I personally know about the war on drugs during the former administration. On, on May, 2026, I received a call from the President Rodrigo Roa Duterte at approximately 5 a.m. instructing me to meet him at his residence in Tonya Luisa, Dapo City. I was already acquainted with them with the mayor having served as the station commander in one of the police stations in Davao City during his tenure. During our meeting, he requested that I will locate a PNP officer or operative who is a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, indicating that he needed someone capable of implementing the war on, on a national level replicating the double model. <laughs> the double model referred to the system involving payment and rewards. <laughs> the double model involves three levels of payment of rewards. <laughs> First is the reward if the suspect is killed. Second, if is the funding of planned operations. And the third is the refund of operational expenses. Uh, Colonel Garma, can you speak louder? Uh, I, I'm sorry, speak closer to the microphone.
actually, I informed the president that I was unaware of any individual with those qualifications as I had not been assigned outside of Davao City or had served in the national capacity within the PNP. However, I recalled my upperclassman Edilberto Leonardo, who was heading the Criminal Investigation Detection Group and was also a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I mentioned his name to the President. On the same day, a certain individual named Mooking contacted me to request for the phone number of Leonardo's contact details, which I promptly provided. A week later, I learned from Arthur Narsolis via phone call that Sir Leonardo had been summoned and was instructed to proceed to the Royal Mandai Hotel in Davao for a meeting. Leonardo informed me later that he stayed at the hotel for almost three days, during which the president directed him to organize, according to Sir Leonardo, a task force, which he understood as PA of TF. When Leonardo relayed this information, urged me to join the task force, I declined first, citing my lack of experience in handling said operations. Leonardo subsequently informed me that he had prepared a proposal routed to Bongo outlining the task force which would encompass the Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. subsequently informed me that they had prepared a proposal wrote it to Mongo confirming the task force operation which would encompass Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. He also inquired if he and his classmates could have a courtesy call with the president through Bongo for a photo opportunity. Considering this, I thought it prudent to invite also my classmates to join the courtesy call. So in the presence of Colonel Bacay, Vilela, Grijaldo, Tuzon, and Duenas, the member of class 97 and 96 were accommodated in separate rooms at the DPWH office in Panacan, Davao City. The president did not enter our room and I was unaware if he visited the room of class 96. After the courtesy call, Leonardo informed me that the structure of the mentioned task force would undergo changes. In June of 2016, Leonardo has transferred from Manila to assume the position of the chief of the CIDG Region 11. During the initial three months of the assignment, I facilitated all meetings between Leonardo and Bongo at Leonardo's request. Subsequently, they established direct communication. <laughs> Leonardo informed me that he had recalled several trusted personnel, namely Lester 
Romel Bagtat, Rodel Serbo, Palma, Peter Parungo to serve as operative for the task force, notably Bagtat, Serbo, and Palma were for now discharged from the police service. Romel Bagtat, Serbo, Palma were all former police officers stationed at the CIDG 11 office. They were discharged from the service on or about a year ago due to an operation that led to the killing of one individual. Lester Bergano is, is a provide citizen, while Peter Parunga was a former detainee of CIDG due to a charge of rape that has been cleared. Romel Bagtat, Serbo, Palma, and Parunga were charged with the task of collecting and verifying information provided by police officers in the field concerning arrests of individuals named in the list of drug personalities and creating summary reports. All of these reports would then be encoded and compiled by Lester Bergano. The compilation is thereafter elevated to Sir Leonardo, who will decide what level the arrest or killing was and its corresponding reward. Rewards were only given for killings, while for arrest only for the funding of Copland and refund for operational expenses was given. I saw how these individuals operated when I would visit my friend in CIDG 11. He conveyed that the task force would be structured differently and that he submitted a document to Bongo detailing the task force operation including an overview of the current landscape in the Philippines. I was informed that the structure originated from Bucor, where the Morris Lords are currently incarcerated, and that it has three branches, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, with Peter Lim involved in the Visayas region. Once the task force became operational, I later le learned that all Copland's funds, refunds for operational expenses, and rewards for agents were processed through the account of Peter Parungo. Currently, Lester Bergano maintained a comprehensive list of the personalities of the Philippines. Leonardo conducted briefings for all PDEA, IG regional directors, and PNP chiefs regarding the situation. Additionally, if any individual died during police operations, Leonardo will report the incidents to Bongo for inclusion in the weekly report and request for refunds of operational expenses. Leonardo had final authority to determine who would be included in the list of personalities and to classify their threat level as well as the discretion to remove individuals from the list. Furthermore, in 2016, while I was at the CIDG office following up the appointments of my personnel, I overheard Padilla discussing drug activities at the double panel Connolly with Leonardo. Padilla specifically identified certain Bucor officers involved in the trade, notably mentioning an officer named Ginto who was subsequently killed along with other Bucor members. These are the critical facts I personally know regarding the drug war of the previous administration. I am prepared to provide additional details and information in a supplemental affidavit or during an executive session at the discretion of the committee. I affirm the truthfulness and accuracy of the above statements to assist in the investigation by the Joint Committee, Your Honours.
Mr. Chairman. Uh, go ahead, uh, SDS. Mr. Chairman, uh, alam mo, papasalamat ako kay Ma'am Garma. And no, uh, alam po natin ang nararamdaman mo. Pero kaya ako umakyat, nanonood po ako sa TV, sa baba. Mukhang uh, itong committee na to eh, parang uh, pinilit ka para magsalita. Kaya ka umiyak. Eh baka sabihin eh, Uh, ang Quadcom, pinilit ka para magsumiti ng affidavit at basahin mo. Umiyak ka. So, gusto po namin kasi na pakita mo talaga na kusang loob ang sasabihin mo dito sa Quadcom. Wala pong sapilitan at uh, galing po sa puso nyo ang pagsasalita. So, kaya po ako uh, Umakyat na sa baba ako, kausap ko yung mga ibang kasama natin. Uh, Ma'am Garma, uh, alam ko naman po yung sitwasyon nyo. May nanonood po sa atin buong Pilipinas, lalo na sa Mindanao. Alam ko po kung ano nararamdaman nyo. Pero pakita nyo naman po, in the interest of fairness of every Pilipino, pakita po natin yung fairness dito. Kung uh, titignan niyo po yung mukha niyo sa TV, uh, ang analysis, analisa po namin, parang uh, itong committee na to, which is ako na bigla may affidavit kayo. Kaya ako po sana kung pwede, kasi hindi po naiintindihan yung mga binabasa niyo, yung mga nanonood. Yung affidavit niyo, hindi po naiintindihan yung mga televiewers natin. Kung kayo nandito, naintindihan nyo, pero pag nasa TV kayo, hindi nyo po naintindihan yung mga sinasabi nyo. Mr. Chair, on that note, kung pwede po, uh, kung pwede po, uh, magpahingat siya, huwag siya kumiyak, sabihin niya lahat in a clear reading, in a clear words. Ako po, I move sana para basahin niya ulit yung kanyang affidavit, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po. Uh, siguro, um, uh, <coughs> Miss... Uh... Rohina Garma, we will uh, give you time to uh, to be composed, and uh, we cannot blame you doon sa inyong emotion. Ako rin na bigla din ako doon sa sa kasi is a sudden turn around, no? Uh, from the last mga hearings po natin, and uh, suddenly uh, we will be receiving an affidavit like this, no? Uh, siguro malapat lang po sabihin natin sa committee to kung uh, somebody forces you. Uh, to execute an affidavit like this that uh, a while ago uh, the reason why uh, uh, we are, we're asking uh, Congressman Manuel to uh, to hold uh, his gun kasi nga I was able to see the affidavits and uh, I really wanted to um, to uh, read muna for a while and uh, four pages lang naman po yun so nakakagulat din po yung nilalaman ng inyong affidavit dahil a complete turnaround so Meron po bang pumilit sa inyo para i-execute itong apidabit na ito? Wala pa, Mr. Chair. Um, it took me one week to make some reflections po. And what And, pushes uh, you uh, to, ano, to yeah, uh, execute? I, I, yeah, I realize the, the truth will always set us free, Mr. Chair. And uh, at least I will be able to contribute if we really want to make to make this country a better place to live and for our children. I think we have to do something para maibalik po yung trust sa PNP, magkaroon po ng reform sa PNP, and uh, yung tiwala po ng mga tao, whether victims of criminals sa gobyerno. Kanina po may sinasabi kayo na natatakot kayo sa buhay niyo at sa pamilya niyo. Uh, Saan po kayo natatakot? Of course po, it's normal, Mr. Chair, when you speak the truth, you cannot please everyone. And it's normal to anybody to have that mixed emotion. But still, it took me one week to make reflections. And uh, I realized I need to do my part po. <laughs> Dahil po ba sa relasyon niyo sa nakaraang... Uh, administrasyon kay former president. Um, Kaya po, ang damdamin niyo po ay uh, mixed emotion. 
normal lang naman bilang tao po, Mr. Chair. Pero what prevailed after a week of reflection is I always say the truth will always set me free. We are I helping. want a better place, a better PNP, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ma'am Garma, we are all on the same page. Kaya ginagawa po natin to para sa taong bayan, maayos yung PNP, mawala ang extrajudicial killing, yung drugs. Kaya nandito po tayo. Yung sinasabi niyo po, we are totally agree on that. Kaya gusto ko lang pong i-clear at sinagot nyo na na walang pumilit, nag-meditate ka for how many days before you prepare that affidavit na bigla nga ako ngayong quadcom hearing na meron po kayong affidavit. So on that note, Ma'am Garma, pag-compose na po kayo, ayos na po kayo, pwede nyo po ulit basahin ang inyong affidavit. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay. Uh, SDS, uh, are we going to uh, ask uh, Ms. Garma to uh, to read again? Please, Mr. Chairman. Yung kanyang abidabit, no? Uh, uh, we hope, uh, kasi kanina medyo <laughs> hindi ko rin po na iintindihan, no? Luckily, I was able to read na yung ating pong abidabit. So, uh, siguro kung compose na po kayo uh, para po maintindihan, kasi napaka-importante po nito, no? Nung binabasa ko din po, medyo na-shock din po ako. So, basically, siguro, we will give you another chance uh, para po uh, mabasa itong uh, apidabit as requested and uh, uh, move by uh, SDS uh, Don Gonzalez. So, now, uh, you have the uh, floor again, uh, Ma'am Rohina Garma. On September 12, 2024 and September 27, 2024, I was invited to serve as a resource person during the recent legislative inquiry conducted by the Joint Committee on... Put the uh, mic a little bit uh, closer to your mouth, please. Uh, yes, sir. During these hearings, I was asked several questions concerning my knowledge or involvement in the deaths of three Chinese inmates at the double penal colony and that of General Wesley Barayuga, all focusing on the alleged extrajudicial case of the aforementioned individuals. I was also questioned about my relationship with the former pre president, as well as my career as a police officer and my tenure as a GM of the Philippine Charity Ship Stakes Office. Throughout the hearings, I answered questions from the committee based on my personal knowledge. However, I did so with great apprehension as I recognized that my statements on national television could significantly endanger my life, the safety of my family, and other close to me. After considerable reflection, I am now executing this affidavit to provide a comprehensive information to the Quadcom regarding everything I personally know about the war on drugs during the war former admin on May 16 May of 2016 I received a call from the pre then president Rodrigo Duterte at approximately 5 in the morning instructing me to meet him at his residence in Doña Luisa Davao City I was already acquainted with then mayor Duterte having served as a station commander in one of the police stations in Davao during his tenure. During our meeting, he requested that, an, that I locate a PNP officer or operative who is a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, indicating that he needed someone capable of implementing the war on drugs on a national scale replicating the Davao model. The Davao model referred to the shifting system involving payment and rewards. The Davao model involves three levels of payments of rewards. The first is the reward if the suspect is killed. Second is the funding of planned operations. Third is the refund of operational expenses. 
Initially, I informed the president that I was unaware of any individual with those qualifications as I had not been assigned outside of Davao, nor had I served in a national capacity with the PNP. However, I recalled my upperclassman, Edilberto Leonardo, who was handling the criminal investigation detection group and was also a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I mentioned him, his name to the president. On the same day, a certain individual named Mooking contacted me by the phone to request Leonardo's contact details, which I promptly provided. A week later, I learned from Arthur Narsolis via phone call that Leonardo had been summoned and was instructed to proceed to Royal Mandaya Hotel for a meeting. Leonardo informed me that he stayed at the hotel for three days, during which the president directed him to organize a task force similar to PAOC TF. When Leonardo relayed this information and urged me to join the task force, I declined citing my lack of experience in handling such operations. Leonardo subsequently informed me that he had prepared a proposal routed through Bongo outlining the task force operations which would encompass Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. He also inquired if he and his classmates could have a courtesy call with the president through Bongo for a photo opportunity. Considering this, I thought it would be prudent also to invite my classmates, Bakay, Vilela, Grijaldo, Tuzon, and Duenas, to join the courtesy call. The members of Class 97 and Class 96 of PNPA were accommodated in a separate room at the TPWH office in Panacan, Davao. The president did not enter our room, and I was unaware if he visited the room of class 96. This is 96, sir, not 97. After the call to see call, Leonardo informed me that the structure of the intended task force would undergo changes. In June of 2016, Leonardo was transferred from Manila to assume the position of the chief of the CIDG in Region 11. During the initial three months of this assignment, I facilitated all meetings between Leonardo and Bongo at Leonardo's request. Subsequently, they established direct communications. Leonardo informed me that he had recalled several trusted personnel, namely, I met Lester Bergano, Romel Bactat, Rodel Serbo, Michael Palma and Peter Parungo to serve as operatives for the task force. Notably, Romel Bactat, Rodel Serbo, and Michael Palma were all discharged as police officers. Romel Bactat and Romel Serbo, Michael Palma, Palma were all former police officers stationed at CITG 11 office. They were discharged from service on or about a year ago due to an operation that led to the killing of one individual. Lester Bergano is a private citizen, while Peter Parungo was a former detainee in CIDG due to a charge of rape that has been cleared. Romel Bactat, Rodel Serbo, Michael Palma, and Peter Parungo were charged with the task force of collecting, verifying informations provided by police officers in the field concerning arrests or deaths of individuals named in the list of drug personalities and creating a summary report. All of these reports would then be encoded, compiled by Lester Bergano. The compilation is thereafter elevated to Leonardo, who will then decide what level the arrest or killing was and its corresponding reward. Rewards were only given for killings 
while for arrest only the funding of the Copland and a refund for the expenses was given. I saw how this individual operated when I would visit the CIDG office in Region 11 to see my friend Lot Lot. He also conveyed to me that the task force would be structured differently in that he submitted a document to Bongo detailing the task force operation, including an overview of the current landscape in the Philippines. I was also informed that the structure originated from Bucor, where numerous lords are currently incarcerated in that it has three branches, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, with Peter Lim involved in the Visayas region. Once the task force became operational, I later learned, learned that all Copland, Copland funds, refunds for operational expenses and rewards against for agents were processed through the bank accounts of Peter Parungo at Metro Bank, BDO, and PS Bank. Concurrently, Lester Bergano maintained a comprehensive list of the personalities in the Philippines. Leonardo conducted briefings for Orpidea, IG, regional directors, and PNP chiefs regarding the operations. Additionally, if any individual died during police operation, Leonardo would report the incident to Bongo for inclusion in his weekly report and request for refunds of operational expenses. Leonardo had the final authority to determine who would be included on the list of personalities and to classify their threat levels as well as the discretion to remove individuals from the list. Furthermore, in 2016, while I was at the CIDG office, following up on personal appointments, I overheard Superintendent Patiria, Padilla of Bucor discussing drug activities at the Davao Penal Colony with Leonardo. Padilla specifically mentioned certain Bucor officers involved in the drug trade, notably mentioning an officer named Ginto, who was subsequently killed along with other Bucor members. These are the critical facts I personally know regarding the drug war of the previous administration. I am prepared to provide additional details and information in the supplemental affidavit or during an executive session at the discretion of the committee. I affirm the truthfulness and accuracy of the above statement to assist in the investigation by the Joint Committee on Dangerous Drugs, Public Order and Safety, Human Rights, and Public Accounts of the Honorable House of Representatives, the Quadcom, Mr. Chair. Tapos na po kayo, ma'am? Ma yes, ma Mr. Chair. So, on that note, ma'am, maraming salamat ulit sa pagbasa niyo sa inyong affidavit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Congressman uh, Gonzalez. Just brief, sir. Sige, make it brief and yes, short. Yes, sir. Asa ta tanan biktima, Katung panahon nga ako Tagalog, si Peter, in Tagalog, uh, speak Bisaya to kasi them. kasabot sila Bisaya, sir. Yeah. Katung tanang biktima, wala na ako control tanan na akong tao. Yes, it is true, I am the city director. But lahat ng station commander are also tasked to implement the, the war on drugs. Merong mga station commander in charge. Now, pangutanan ninyo, ang saan ako gibuhat as city director? During that time, Tanan sila, 
ginahatagan na mong semina, ginatudluan na ako, kaya pag-abot na ako sa Cebu City, talaga wala good sila kabalo. Unsa ang pagbuhat, unsa buhaton. That is why, pag nainahitabo sa inyo ha, at it appears na mga pulis na ako ang, ang involved, ginatas ang NBI to take cognizance so that kung sakali man ang resulta ng investigasyon is not favorable sa inyo, at least sasabihin niyo the investigation is fair. So I always, the, the crime scene is always open for the NBI to to take cognizance. And nandun po palagi yung aming crime lab, which is a separate unit, which is not under my supervision and control po, to take cognizance the crime scene. Yun po yung nangyari po sa Cebu. And I am very sorry in behalf of my men na, nagka, na nagkamali sa inyo. I'm very sorry. But I cannot control all of them. Lahat sila trained police officer. Alam nilang rules of engagement. But alam mo, once you are in the ground, you will always use your discretion. Hindi mo yan talaga instinct yan ng tao, discretion. At nakita ko rin naman na ginamit na nagkakamali. Inaamin ko may nagkakamali. Pero pinagbibigyan ko kung saan nyo gusto mag file ng case, pinagbibigyan ko, hinahayaan ko. At lahat po yan na-process ang crime scene. Which is not under my control ang crime scene. Separate unit mo humahawak niyan. Then I am sorry to all victims kung hindi ko na-investigahan isa-isa yung case nyo. Okay, salamat, uh, Colonel uh, Garma. Mr. Chair, so, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, so, I, want, I, I want to appreciate Colonel Garma for apologizing. No? But I just would like to correct her. Because she said a moment ago that she believes in the constitutional right of these victims. Now she is saying that they know the rules of engagement. What rules of engagement are you talking about here? The fact is this, Colonel Garma. Your men, your men, and that includes you, violated the constitutional rights of these people. Now, that is not the rules of engagement of the Philippine National Police. If that would be the rule of engagement, then this committee uh, will amend and uh, look at the rules of engagement because that is wrong. The rules of engagement of the police must abide with the constitutional right of every victim. You lang, Mr. Chair. Okay, salamat, uh, Congressman Nabante. So, tapos na po yung ating uh, pagtatanong sa ating mga uh, pamilya ng uh, biktima sa EJK. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank uh, Rise Up Philippines uh, and Attorney Conti, Attorney Colmenares, at uh, sa dito po sa ating mga, mga, ano, mga pamilya ng biktima. Uh, yes, ano, uh, Maari, Miss... Salamat Miss, din po sa Quad Committee. Maari po bang i-recognize din namin yung ibang pamilya na sumama po uh, kaninang umaga at yung iba po sa kanila ay nandirito pa ngayon para po ma-recognize ma lang po. Salamat Sige po. Sige po, pwede pong tumayo ang uh, mga pamilya ng uh, biktima. Kanina po ba sila dyan? Opo, kayo oh. na po. <laughs> kayo po ba yung nakakain? Meron hong pakain na pinabigay si Congressman Dan Fernandez. <laughs> <laughs> so maraming salamat po salamat sa inyong po. pagpunta rito at uh, kung uh, magkaroon pa ho ng isa pang uh, pagdinig tungkol sa usapin sa EJK uh, inaasahan po namin na uh, kayo po ibabalik maraming salamat thank you for, for coming Mag-subscribe at i-click ang notification bell para sa mga susunod na video updates. Maraming salamat po!